Hi again. Now we know a little bit about lights. We know the four different types of lights. We know how to put them in our scenes and we know how to uh, adjust them using the details panel uh, to make changes to the way the lights work. What I want to talk about today is the necessity of rebuilding your lighting and we're going to talk a little bit about light maps um, and, and how those are represented in your scene because they're, they're one of those things that is uh, something that students don't really understand or don't realize is going on in the background but it's important because you need to know what it is and how to how to, to change it in case you need to work on your lighting and your shadows if you're not happy with the way they work i have a basic scene set up here it's very simple it's a blue box on a uh, medium gray background uh, plane i've got a directional light in the scene to cast some shadows on the ground because what we're going to do is we're going to to go in and we're going to compute where the lights are and where the shadows are and this is a very important part of what we do if you were looking at that shadow right there one of the things that you may notice is it's a little bit odd um, if you look over here in this edge right over there it looks a little choppy i'm going to try to zoom in and see how that thing looks and see if you can really see look how rough that shadow is all right the shadows aren't real in a game engine they are projections and you can see it doesn't even line up with the front of that box right there um, it's a projection and it's a guesstimation of just to show you um, one of those things that they do to make it look like it's 3d remember Everything that we do, while it may look like it's 3D, is being projected on a 2D screen. So you're really not looking at a 3D object. What represents a 3D object are the different colors for, say, the, the front of that box and the top of the box are different because one is receiving, uh, the, the color on the top is lighter because it's receiving light. The one on the front is in the shadows a little bit, so it's a little bit darker blue. And we see the, the semblance of a shadow on the ground, but none of those things are really there. It's just a flat two-dimensional image made to look like 3D. So um, that's a really, really rough image down there on the ground. Now, here's the way shadows work. I have a material that I've created, and we'll talk more about materials in another video. But I've got two materials down here in my content browser. I have one that's a medium gray, and that's what the ground is. And you can see if I put it on the box, it changes color. And I've got a dark blue or medium blue, I guess, that can go on either one of these objects. And you'll notice that the shadows remain the same no matter what happens. Now, what is occurring in the background of all of this is Unreal is keeping track of a separate texture. Since that shadow really isn't there, what Unreal is doing is it is examining the world. It is examining where the lights go. It is examining the material that, that um, is going to have this object uh, shadow on it. And then what it does is it computates um, another material called a light map. And what that light map is, is the background material, which is what you see right here, that ground material, um, the color of that plus the color um, and the look of the shadow. And what it does is it creates this material, holds it in the background, and then displays it there on that ground plane. All right, so even though I've applied this material to it, in reality, what's, what is applied to that ground plane is something called a light map because there's a light in the scene and there are shadows being cast. Now, normally we create our materials from scratch. So let's say, for instance, I wanted that box to be wood. I want it to look like it's a wooden box. I would create um, a wood material. And you would think then if I was creating a ground uh, texture, like maybe I wanted that look to look like it's sitting on dirt, that what I would have to do to simulate what Unreal is doing is I would have to paint a giant texture of ground plane, of, of grass or dirt or whatever it is I wanted it to be or a combination of that. Then I'd have to figure out about where the box goes. And then I would, in Photoshop, darken an area of it to simulate that particular shadow coming from the box which works really well, except how do you know exactly where that box is? And if you ever have to go back and move that box, let's say, pick that box up and say, I'm going to slide it back a little bit, I'd have to go back and change my material that takes up that ground plane because I have to move the shadow. The shadow would still remain up here. Well, that's kind of what the light map is doing. That's what Unreal is doing with the light map. And you'll notice as I move this object around, um, the shadow moves with it. And that's because I actually haven't created that light map just yet. 
to do that, we go up here to build, and then we have some settings in here. We have build lighting only, which is going to go ahead and run it. We have some light quality. The light quality in this particular case is production, high, medium, or preview. Trust me, you want to keep this on preview. Um, and the quality isn't as good, but my gosh, it's a lot faster. If you put this on production, the shadows would be crisp and they would be clean and it would probably take two hours to do it on a scene as simple as this. Lighting information. There's some basic lighting in there. Like in this particular case, what is happening is when um, Unreal is going to create this giant texture. It's a, basically it's going to create a giant flat image of that ground plane with the shadow in place as a dark spot. I can control um, how dense it's going to be. I can control um, with the grayscale quality of it. I can come down here to the resolution and I can change the resolution on it. The smaller the size, um, the uh, cruder the shadow is, the higher the finished rendering size, um, the bigger it is, the, the higher quality it's going to be. So let's say um, right now it says static meshes, it's 32 and 256. So the shadows would be computed on an image that's 256 pixels square on a static mesh. On the BSP surface, which is what this is here on the ground, it would be set to 512 pixels by 512 pixels, which is not very big. I can go ahead and click on that and change that, maybe go up to uh, 1024. And it's going to create an image 1024 by 1024. I can go 2048, 4096. They're all powers of two. That's the thing that you have to remember on that one. But these are controlling the quality that you're going to see off that shadow. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to come back up here and we're just going to check the button that says, or just click here where it says build lighting only. And then we're going to sit back for a moment. Um, it has to do something called set up a swarm connection. So it's going to be... Um, using the computer processor it's probably going to come back usually the first time you do it it comes back and it asks you if you're going to give it permission to do what it's going to do once you've done that um, then it's usually uh, doesn't ask you again from there now this one because it's a simple scene only took about five seconds but you notice already that there is a change in the screen the blues look much better um, on that box and the shadow looks a whole lot crisper so what, what this has done is in the background, it examined that scene, and what that swarm connection did was create an image that's 1024 by 1024 that is the gray background with all of the shadows computed in place. And then that is placed on that ground plane. It actually replaces this material down over here. Okay. Now, if I pick that box up and I move it, you see what's going on. All right. What has happened, and the shadow looks pretty good um, on that box right there. It looks actually pretty pretty nice because I, I changed the settings on it. But you'll notice I got that blob still on the ground right there. What has happened, um, and, and usually if you pick something up and move it, you destroy that light map. So what has happened is it's still in place. It's now, I've changed it. So if I want that shadow to go away, what I have to do is I have to go back up. And I have to build my lighting again. And what it will do is it'll go ahead and process it. It'll remove that little shadow because it's not there on that material anymore. Okay, it's done. Now let's put it over here. And again, if I want to pick it up and if I decide I want to move this thing back over here and say, well, that's, I think I like that position of that one better. I just have to go back up and I have to build my lighting again. Okay. And this is something that you're going to have to keep in mind as you're doing things. Um, you need to assess the fact that um, something may not look right. Your shadows may not look good. Your object may not look correct. Um, when I first put that box in there, it had some weird, weird um, shadows on it. Um, when you, as soon as you rebuild your lighting, um, everything is going to look really good until you start placing more objects in your scene or moving objects in your scene, and then you're going to get that crappy look again, but that's just something that you have to get used to. Do know that the more objects you have, the more complex the materials are, the more reflections or illuminations or things that you have in a scene, um, the harder it is for it to process, the longer it takes for it to process, and I've done some levels where it literally takes an hour to compute all of the shadows and all the lighting in a particular scene, depending upon what it is. Now, this is considered static lighting. That light doesn't move. You do have the ability in here to create dynamic lighting or movable lighting. And on the lights, if you remember, I go up there and click on that light up there. 
All right. This one is set to be uh, stationary. It could be static, it could be stationary, or it can be movable. Now, if you're creating movable lights, that would be something, say, like um, you have, uh, you've created a, a warehouse and you've got a bare light bulb dangling from a wire. And when the character walks into a room, he bumps into it and that wire and the lights swing back and forth. As it swings back and forth, the shadows have to become dynamic or movable. That means the shadows are going to move. That also means Unreal can't go in and compute the shadows because the shadows are handled on the fly. Now that takes up a tremendous amount of memory um, and for the most part we try to avoid those but usually those are unavoidable. You're always probably always going to have at least one uh, movable light in a scene um, and that's that's a good thing to have. It simulates a, a realistic environment. So that's something to keep in mind. So this is, in essence, what we're going to be working with when we're talking about rebuilding your lighting. And it also talks about, uh, if you hear a reference to a light map, um, you need to know that that's what's going on. Now, individual assets. Um, this is not a brush, this little blue box. This is a, an asset that is placed in the scene. When you're modeling in 3D, if you're going to be bringing your object into a 3D environment like this, you need to do the light mapping yourself in a 3D program. And you'll have to look, um, depending upon which program you're using, you can look online and you can see exactly how to do that. You can also check the wiki pages at Unreal. They talk a little bit about Max, I believe, in Maya, um, how to do that. But it's kind of tricky because when you create a texture or a material um, in a 3D program like Max, um, and you use something called Unwrap UVW, which is what takes and takes a material and, and analyzes the each polygon of an object. This is a cube, so it has six sides or six polygons. It would analyze that and say this material goes on that polygon, another material goes on a polygon up here, another one on that side over there. Um, you also have to do the same thing with light maps because um, you have to make sure that each surface of an object, every polygon that you see, okay, is... Um, alone stands alone and is separated from every other polygon on an object because uh, Unreal has to look at it and determine how the light is going to affect it. So you can see this lighter up here on top than it is on the front than it is over here on the side. That's dark, that's medium, that's light. And the back side is probably the same as the top. Okay, Since it has to figure out how dark this material has to be or how dark this material has to be, or how light this has to be, it has to see in the basic model each individual polygon broken out so it can then figure out the best way to, to show the lighting on that. So this is not really receiving light, if you follow my drift. This really isn't in the shadows. What that is, is unreal, analyzing the material that's on it, and then determining this polygon is facing away from it, so I'm going to display it darker. This one is facing away, I'm going to make it even darker still. The one on the top is going to be the lightest because it's receiving light. That is something that Unreal is doing to a three-dimensional model, and that light map has to be part of the model if you plan on doing this. If, for example, you had two polygons overlapping one another, then Unreal can't go in and distinguish between the two. And you might end up with a top surface that's as dark as the side surface, or maybe this one back over here has is half light and half dark because you have polygons overlapping things in a light map. So you need to go back if you're building your own things and look and see how light maps are done. Um, and that's it for lights.